All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. And we are heading into this great the, uh, presentation. OK. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy 2024. And it is a year of a dragon if you're following the, um, the Chinese philosophy. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Olga St. Pierre and I am a licensed real estate agent in our area and one of the preferred vendors for many of our community uh, resources and, and sponsors. So just a little bit about me. We have been helping our clients with uh, being great members in our community as well as making moves across United States and Canada for the last 15 years. And our team mission is to help anyone who is dreaming of becoming a homeowner, becoming one. And then once you are a homeowner, we're still there every step of the way with you to make sure that you are sustainable and responsible homeowner and a member of our community. We do have a complete move solution from start to finish. And part of that is our concierge service, which many of you have heard me talk about. So think of that as your yellow pages. So whenever you need someone, you open up the yellow pages and you just go down the list to figure out who are some of the options are. Well, we invite you to not use the yellow pages and just picking somebody out of the blue, but using somebody who we've had our clients use or we have used ourselves that has been referred and is responsible, honest, and has good communication. So that includes contractors, professionals, people to help you make a fresh start maybe in 2024 if you want to do some uh, organizing, budgeting, decluttering, things like that. So our concierge service is absolutely free of charge to you and we do our best to put you in touch with a couple of different people depending on who you're looking for. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And this workbook along with the contact information is going to be forwarded to everyone that signed up for this workshop. It's going to come to you as an email, as well as a copy of the recording will be sent to you. And it's going to be also posted on our YouTube channel. So that way you can listen to it from the comfort of your home at any time that is convenient to you. So let's jump in and talk about some of the small things that we can do to make our new year great. You know, I was I was doing some reading and seeing what are some of the th suggestions and things that are posted online, because always beginning of January and pretty much taking you through the end of January is what everybody's talking about. New you, reinvention, things like that. And I encourage you not to think this way, because you are still amazing. You are still awesome. So don't reinvent yourself. Just think about some of the things, small things that you can implement to make yourself a little bit better, right? So that's that, that's kind of the goal. And I want to start out by doing a memories jar, just something simple. I actually have one here that I have shared with some of my clients and my family members or my friends. And it's very simple to make. You just need a jar with a lid. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be an empty pickle jar or a jar from ragu and a lid on it. You just need a sticker and marker to decorate it. And also a bunch of index cards or just plain paper and a pen. And the goal for this jar is to help you create memories every week as you work through your year. If I was to ask you to go back to 2023 and tell me what are some of the cool things that happened in March, you're probably not going to remember. So the goal for this jar is so that way the end of the year in December, you open it up and you're going to have 52 pieces of paper with some cool things that have happened in different months of the year, right? And it's just something fun that you can do on New Year's Eve, or you can do it at the end of the year with your loved ones or just by yourself. And it's just a fun way for you to remember the year that you just had. Well, one of the things that I love to do is actually 23 and 23. So we just wrapped up the year 23 and I encouraged my family to jot down 23 amazing things that we did. And you know what? Having a memory jar like this is also helpful so that way you can have your list because I think it's a lot easier to remember the bad things happened, but yet let's focus and uh, look at the things that are good. 
There's also a digital version of this that you can use as an app. It's called Gratitude. The same thing that you can uh, write some journal entries there, talk about some of the things that are important to you and keep it in your phone if that is your choice instead of making it an actual physical item like a jar. So next, let's talk about a little bit of saving. Uh, we talk about it throughout the year as well in our different presentations. And I am encouraging you to do that even more because the cost of everything is going up. And um, it has been suggested that the year of 2024 is not going to be an easy one. It's going to be challenging. So how do we stay ahead of potential repairs or some kind of emergencies or something that may come up so that way you're not being blindsided, but you are truly prepared. So I have some things here for you that you can do, right? You can make it as simple as adding $10 each week to a jar or a folder or a box. And then by November, you should have about $400. So if you wanna make it really simple, you can do it that way. The goal is for you to have in between three and six months in the rainy day fund. And that rainy day fund can cover multiple of things depending on what your life looks like, what your employment looks like. It could be for car repairs, for home repairs, for emergencies. If you want to make it truly fun, I have a way for you to get $10,000 by the time you're done. So you can use this, uh, this kind of like a bingo board sort of page and we can also mail uh, we can send you a copy either email it or mail it to you and then once you let's say you have this week you have 30 extra dollars that you can set aside so you're going to cross off the 30 dollars from this bingo board and you're going to put that money away if you really want to be super intentional about it you can create a savings account in your local bank and start putting that money in and that money does not go anywhere except in your savings account. And the good idea would be to have that savings account also earning you interest. So that way that money is working hard for you. So by the time you cross up every single square on this bingo card, you are going to have $10,000 saved up. So amazing. Now resolutions and as I already mentioned to you, the word resolutions is just too heavy. And I think what a lot of people do is they jump in gun ho in the first couple of weeks in January and they say, oh, I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to this and that. And then they get overwhelmed because you still have to eat, live and sleep and work. And then nothing happens. So I invite you to create you for yourself a 24 and 24 list. That's what we're going to do. I am about... Um, halfway through mine. So I think I've gotten about 13 or 14 items on my list. And it can be just about anything, right? It can be something that you want to do yourself, something that maybe you want to accomplish in your career, things that you want to do with your loved ones, whatever it is that just makes you happy. You can get it organized by themes, by different things. You can do 12 and 12, but make it simple. It can be a phrase. You can say, try, everything counts. And remember, when you're trying to compare it to others, everybody's, other people's list is theirs. So whatever makes sense to you and speaks and sings to you is what's the most important thing, okay? So if you want to, you can actually make a list of 34 items, which means that it's an extra 10 items, and then kind of say, you know what? If I get somewhere close to 24 out of this whole list, that would be amazing, okay? And then review your 2023. You go, you can make that your ta-da list of the things that you have accomplished. So it's, again, the focus is to make sure that you're looking at some fun and positive things that took place. And you can think back and then review your calendar, make a list. What I ended up doing was because I did it last year and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't remember what happened in the first quarter. It is now December. And it was a little harder because you're trying to literally go back and remember what happened nine months ago. So I actually have a reminder on my Google calendar every month to jot down some of my wins and exciting things that happen. And I also journal and write those things down. So that is a, a little reminder for me as well. So think about how you can do that. So that way it's exciting and fun for you. So easy ways for you to create and keeping new habits and decisions and goals. 
What I can tell you is that it's not easy to put new habits and goals in place because you're not used to them. They're not part of your routine. So you have to remind yourself every day to do something new until that task becomes a habit and becomes a habit after you repeatedly do it for a number of times where it just becomes part of your subconscious. So one of the easiest ways that I have found for you to do that, you take your new habit and goal and you attach it to something that you already do on a regular basis. So here are some examples. You always drink coffee or tea in the morning. You brush your teeth in the morning and maybe you browse your social media. So let's say that you want to have a new habit of making sure that you floss your teeth, right? So you re put a sticky note on your kitchen cabinet that when you make that coffee in the morning, you're going to go back upstairs and you're going to floss, okay? Uh, or if you are trying to exercise more, maybe you're trying to, to fit in a 10-minute routine every morning, one of the things that worked for me that I have implemented is that I knew that my tea kettle takes seven minutes to boil every morning. So I said, okay, great. So while when I hit that tea kettle, I'm going to go back upstairs into my bedroom and I'm going to do seven minutes of some kind of exercise. I need to move my body every day. And then that seven minutes turned into about 15 minutes, but that became a habit because when I hit that on button in my, on my coffee kettle, I knew that was my time to go upstairs and do some stretching, yoga, or whatever move that would that made sense for me for that day. And also, remember, you are trying to instill new habits, so make them small. Don't think that you're going to be running every day. If your goal is to implement running in 2024, start small and say, you know what, I'm going to run once a week. And then as that becomes a habit, then you add another day. And then after a period of time, you're going to add another day, right? And then your new habit is going to be, be part of your routine. And then you're going to do your regular activity. So try that and then let me know how it's working out for you, but I found that to be one of the best ways for you to actually take the things that you want to implement that are new and actually make them part of your everyday routine. Some other things to help you make your life easier. I think that a lot of us are running around and we have family, we have business, we have our hobbies, we have work. And that's a lot. And sometimes you just want to take a breath and say, you know what? I just don't want any more, anything else on my plate. So I have some tips here for you to hopefully help you make your life a little bit easier as you work through every day. So the one thing that worked really well for me is having a notepad. And I know here it says just have it on the fridge, but I can tell you that I have a notepad just about every room in my house. I have a notepad in my car. I have a notepad on my nightstand in my bedroom. Because what I have found is that it's easy for me to think of something, but then I need to write it down so that way I don't forget. So I have right here in front of me on my desk, a couple different sticky notes and, and pads. And I also have a notepad upstairs in my bedroom if I think of something especially before you go to bed so that way you don't take it with you where your brain is not shutting off and letting you relax and get a good night's rest you need to write those things down so that's where the notepad on the fridge is a good idea if you just want to start with that and start small use it as a grocery list reminders thoughts and more have your family write you notes my daughter started a really good habit last year where <clears throat> she left <laughs> if she left for school before me, she would write me, I love you, mommy, or just some kind of fun note in the morning. And she would put a little sticky note next to my coffee mug. And I really loved getting those notes. Planning for unexpected. Think about all the birthdays and events and things that are happening in your life over the course of a year and try to plan ahead. Especially now we're in January where a lot of Christmas items are on clearance and sale. So perhaps you can pick up some of a more neutral wrapping paper, tissue paper, 
uh, cards maybe that don't say happy birthday on it, but they're blank. And you can use those cards for different events and different congratulations or notes that you may want to write to your friends and family throughout the year. So put all of that stuff in a tote and then put that tote in your closet. So whenever you need something, you have a neutral bag, a neutral tissue paper or wrapping paper and some cards to quickly put something together where it's not going to require you to run out to Target and do some last minute shopping and get you all frustrated because you just wanted to relax from a, maybe a long day that you've had. Declutter and freshen up. I think a lot of us think about January and February as a fresh year. I really need to get some things going. I need to make some changes. And some of these things that are actually what we took from our declutter class. And I can tell you that our declutter class in the first quarter of the year always has 40, 50 people because everybody's thinking about what does that fresh start look like? How can I do some fresh things in my life, in my house, in my car? So I have some tips here for you in terms of decluttering. Again, make it simple. One of my favorite things to do is use the waiting time from seven minutes it takes my coffee to boil or 10 to 12 minutes for our pasta to cook or waiting for family member in the shower or even commercial breaks on TV. Use that time as a little quick, tidy time in the room that you're in. So if you're in the kitchen, quickly load and unload the dishwasher, you know, clean one part of the countertop, take out the trash and recycle. You can, there's always stuff that can be done, right? There's always something that can be done. So use that quick time and make it a game with yourself to see, okay, how much can I accomplish in the 12 minutes while I'm waiting for pasta to boil? Don't forget this time of the year to clear out your medicine cabinet. Expired medications, old medications, older makeup, lotions, things like that. Something that you haven't used for six months to a year is time for it to be thrown away because it's old, it's not refrigerated. And it's the products that you either put on your skin or you, you know, it's, it's a medicine that you take inside your body. Keep a donation box or bag or something of that sort in your closet, in your basement, in your laundry room, as you come across things that you're like, oh, well, I haven't used this in a couple of years and all it's doing is sitting here collecting dust, put that item in your box. This way, when the box is full and you still feel the same about all those items, you can just take them straight to the donation, okay? Clean out your most often used helpers. This is something important that I would suggest, I think that you take away and do it in the next couple of days. The helpers that we're constantly touching and using on daily basis are earbuds, are remotes, phones, car shifters, steering wheels, all of those things, keys, laptops, tablets, here's a good list for you. Things that we use and touch on a regular basis, don't forget to wipe them and clean them because we are in the season of infections, viruses, and just general sickness because we're in the winter season. So let's talk about maximizing our vacations. So this is also a good time for you to think about the things that you want to do for yourselves. So if you love to plan a vacation, if you love to travel, or if you don't love to travel, Taking time off is just as important to help you reset, reprogram, and just take some deep breaths and relax. All of us need it. We just do it in the different ways, okay? So I thought this was a fun post that I saw on one of the social media channels where if you truly wanted to maximize how much time you have, you'd use the holidays that are official days off, some of the federal and state holidays, and then if you were to maximize them, depending on the time of the year, you can do that. So I have some four examples here for you for the things that you can do in January, April, July, and December. And if you think about it, like for example, in, in April, if you take the full week before Easter and your company is closed on Good Friday and Easter Monday, it only going to require for you to take four vacation days, right? So if you get 10, 
you're going to only need four, yet with both weekends, it's actually a physical 10-day break. So if you truly want to maximize this and make it fun, here is kind of like insider tips for you on the different days of the year. Some travel smarts. Uh, my family is big travelers. We travel for two reasons. One is, of course, if you want to travel to relax and do some things like sit on the beach or maybe by the pool. And then there's another kind of travel where you travel to learn, to experience new things, to maybe see history, things like that. And it always helps when you do those things, you are travel smartly. So that way it is the least stressful as possible. So I have some things here for you that I have experienced myself and others have shared with me that I hope that you can kind of take it and see if it makes sense to you as well. We love using packing cubes to organize our things. Make sure that you bring mobile battery chargers with you. This way, if you're using maps for walking around the city, for example, it's going to drain your battery and you can then use that mobile battery charger to recharge your phone a few times. Flying with the TSA pre-check has been a lifesaver where you don't have to take off your shoes, you don't have to take your laptop, and you go into a smaller security line. Uh, we prefer to stay at Airbnbs when we travel because you get a whole apartment where there's a kitchen and there's laundry facility, so you actually can do laundry and do some cooking to save money on eating out all the time. Getting around it with Uber and Lyft has been great as well. And if you are a local in New Jersey, Mercer County Airport has been, it's kind of like a hidden gem because <laughs> Frontier Airlines flies to quite a few destinations and it's 20 minutes from many of us from home. <laughs> I also encourage you to create some memories from your trips. And this is something that my oldest daughter started doing, and I thought it was just such a clever idea. She collects flyers and bookmarks and tickets whenever we go. And then she has a notebook that she creates a travel journal from using those things. You can actually use the stubs and bookmarks and other things and you can <laughs> make them into like magnets or bookmarks or some other memorable things to help you remember your trips as well. Here are some other interesting hacks that we found on social media. But if you wanted to figure out kind of like to beat the system and say, okay, when is the best time to book my tickets? Or when is the best time to depart or days to travel? Here's what we found. Best day to travel is Thursday. Most expensive day to travel back is Sunday. If you wanted to depart before 3 p.m., that is going to give you better chance of uh, cancellations as well as late flights. I did find that to be mostly true because it seems that the the later in the day the flight is, it gives the opportunity of everything from the morning to kind of back up and then create a hassle for you. Best day to book flights is Sunday and the most expensive day is a Friday. So let me know if you go to use these hacks and how they work out for you and if they actually make sense for you as well. Here are some other things that I have found interesting is that if you were to book your flight in the incognito Chrome page, it's also going to save you some money because as you know, our activities online are tracked and airlines also try to see who you are when you traveled and they will sometimes increase their prices of their tickets knowing your activities and knowing how you travel. So try that hack as well. Next, scan your most important documents and email them to your phone or add them as pictures to your phone so that way just in case if something happens to your documents while you are traveling, especially if you are aboard, abroad, you can easily get those documents replaced and you still have a copy of the document 
to be able to identify you as your ID. We have a really cool vacation checklist as a postcard that we send to our clients. If you would like one, that's just something to help you before you go away. Here's a good checklist for you to say, okay, did I take everything? Did I take care of my mail? Did I water my plants? Uh, did you arrange for someone to take care of your pets? Just some of the things that sometimes you don't think about. This is a great vacation checklist also to help you again, make your life a little bit easier for you. How are we going to make some other things fun? I can tell you for a fact that I have used all of these things is if you are a member of your local library, there's tons of freebies that the library offers. Did you know that many libraries offer free museum passes? We have taken advantage of them and saved quite a bit of money. So check with your local county library and see what programs they offer. Sometimes you have to inquire where the tickets are available and to which institution. And then sometimes you just have to plan ahead. We are on Zoom and we're having fun. So I encourage you to use Zoom for fun as well, not just for required meetings. You can scroll through Eventbrite or through Meetup for interesting lectures, classes, and workshops. And you can search for actually for free things as well which means that you can have fun on Zoom, including exercising as well. And I also included a virtual tour of world-class museums that became available when we were in the true height of COVID back in 2020. And I still find it fascinating where you can virtually, through the use of our today's 21st century technology, just walk through a museum in a different country, in a different part of the world, and truly enjoy those treasures. Make it memorable. So this is something fun that I decided to do. Uh, I decided to recreate some of the pictures with my dad. So you'll see here, the top picture is me and my dad. And I'm probably... I'm not sure, maybe six or seven years old here. And so what we did is we decided to recreate it uh, probably a year ago and made it just like that. So that was fun. I encourage you to do the same thing as well. Find some of your pictures that you have with your loved ones that may be 10 or 20 years old and recreate them and make your then and now photos. Party hacks. I have some suggestions here for you. Some of them are a little unconventional, but think about the things that you have in your own home that you can use again to make your life easier. You can use your muffin tins as trays. You can also use them for leftovers and you can also use them for your condiments. Let's say if you're having a barbecue or even if you're having a charcuterie tray, you could put the pieces right into the muffin tins to make it easier as well for cleanup and for people to grab things. And a twin sheet can be used as a table cover because it's not going to blow away and it's easy to wash and reuse. Birthday freebies. I don't know how many of you guys take the time to kind of bask in the glory a little bit and take advantage of the freebies. Well, I have a list here for you, depending on what tickles your fancy and what you like. Uh, my daughters and I like to grab a free drink at Panera. Uh, sometimes they'll have like a free dessert. We also get a free drink at Starbucks. And we also like to get some things at Sephora as well. And don't forget for your furry friends, Petco, Pet Supplies, and PetSmart also have some freebies for your pets as well. How can we make our life easier in your car? If you guys know that I am a real estate agent, I do spend quite a bit of time in my car. So after a period of time, I decided to make it my second home and really thought hard about what can I put in my car that is going to live in my car to make my life easier. So I divided into two categories, humans, which is my family and our clients, and things that I'm going to need for my car to make sure that it's continuously operating in the good shape because I do need it and rely on it for my living. So for humans, think about depending on what climate you're in or where you're located, 
some of the things that you potentially need on a regular basis. It could be paper towels, neutral snacks, is something that I am big on for sure, especially if you have kids and they have lots of activities that are happening to help you from going to a um, fast food restaurant and maybe wasting money on things that are not healthy. Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, trash bags, phone battery, charger pack, blanket, beanies, gloves, Ziploc bags, and shopping bags <coughs> is what I have in my car to make my life easier. And then for my car, I want to make sure that I have things just in case my car breaks down. I have jumper cables, air pressure gauge, first aid kit, 100% has to be in your each of your cars. Flashlight WD-40 basic toolkit. And of course, my car registration, my insurance card, as well as my car manual. For personal or family things, we included some things here that I have taken advantage of and I know other people as well. When you buy certain things and you know that you may need to have a warranty for them, so think big ticket items like appliances, TVs, make sure that you scan those receipts or take a picture of them because they're going to fade. And I can tell you for a fact that the, the warranty is null and void unless you can provide proof of purchase, right? Take advantage of the curbside pickup that many stores still offer. Use Instacart for grocery delivery if you're not feeling good, but you still want to get some groceries delivered. I know some groceries cannot be delivered also, I think through uh, DoorDash and Uber Eats. So take advantage of those things. And two of my favorite apps are Crazy Coupon Lady and Flip App. Flip App is awesome because it gives you your uh, store circulars, whether it's grocery, Target, Walmart. I think BJ's is Costco is on, the, on there as well. And you can also search the app for things that are on sale. Let's say you're looking for Briar's ice cream for sale. That's what my daughter always looks for. I can actually search the Flip app and it'll tell me which grocery store Briar's ice cream is on sale, which just makes it so much easier and I can just go directly to that store. And the last tip that is, is extremely important that I wanted to encourage you to do is for your financial health, make sure that you pull your credit report three times a year and it's absolutely free of charge to you. This website was established by the three credit agencies and it's required by law. So head over to annualcreditreport.com and what you want to do is just make sure that what is reported on your credit reports is truly accurate because your credit report is something that many companies will use in order to approve you for credit, whether it's a cell phone bill, whether it's your utility bill, or you're purchasing furniture, car, or a house, which is the biggest item that we will buy in our lifetime. So make sure that you check your, your credit reports on a regular basis throughout the year to make sure that there's nothing fishy on there that can affect your financial health. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. I encourage you to use this workbook as things that make sense to you. Don't try to implement everything, but decide on maybe a couple of things, maybe between three and five and say, you know what, this is what I am going to do for my own new year plans, okay? And of course, the last slide here is how you can get in touch with me. I'm always available. I'm an actual live person. My phone number, my email is listed here. We have lots of workshops that are exciting, that are planned, that have been updated for 2024. And you can find the schedule of workshops at this link live with Olga. And please subscribe to our YouTube channels where all of the workshop recordings are living and you can go back to them at any time to see and to review and find something else that maybe you have missed, again, from the comfort of your home. And if you want to stay in touch with me through social media, most of the time I am hanging out on Facebook and my link on Facebook is right here. And I would love for you to join me <laughs> as well. I am getting off of uh, getting um, 
trying to get and chase a cold away that I have gotten right after New Year's. So please forgive me for my coughing. But I do hope that you enjoyed our presentation today and that it gave you some cool and interesting ideas to help you hit off the ground running and get your 2024 year to a great start. Um, is there? Let me just see if there's any questions. So we posted the live workshop schedule in the chat. And uh, let me know if anybody else has any cool ideas. If anybody else has anything else to share, let us know. Otherwise, if you if you signed up through the library system, the, the library coordinator is going to send the information to you. But you're also welcome to message me here through the chat with your email address, and we'll be sure to send you the link to the recording and the workbook for this workshop.